Hi everyone, so today I'm going to be talking about rotational motion. So far what I've been talking about was basically a motion of objects on a straight line or a linear motion. Now I'm switching to describing uh, motions of uh, objects uh, about, a, about an axis of rotation and basically the objects that they spin about some point. This is called rotation. This is a rotational motion as, and, uh, as you can see. And we see what are the analogs of, um, of, of rotational motion with respect to the linear motion or translational motion. This is called angular motion or rotational motion. Just like the way that we were measuring how much of a distance or how much, uh, you know, uh, how much we have covered in, in our, uh, in our motion on a, in a, in a linear motion, uh, and then we would, you know, um, express it in delta x, and this was like change in displacement, and we would measure it in either meters, miles, kilometers, feet, yards, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. We have the same sort of, um, you know, analog of this delta x and how many meters, let's say, in um, in rotational motion. So what we are uh, doing here is essentially we are measuring how much of a uh, how much of an angle we have covered during some you know certain amount of time. This many angles can be expressed in degrees. Degrees. It can. Ex can be expressed in, 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 in terms of number of revolutions and it can also be expressed in terms of um, number of radians. So revolutions we all know which, which means covering one full circumference of the circle that we were rotating around. Degrees is the number of degrees and we know for the full circle this number is 360 degrees and now let's talk about radians this is essentially what a radian what uh, a radian is um, you know and uh, this is how one radian is defined so it's essentially in any circle with radius of r the length of circumference of the circle that's exactly r this angle is called one radian. So if you just eyeball this, you'll see that in one full circle, you're going to be having one, two, three, four, five, six ish radians, which is exactly correct. It's essentially two pi radians, which is, which is two times 3.14. And that gives you 6.28. So six ish radian is the full um, circle and uh, it's essentially it's equal to 360 degrees. Um, so this is it, this is basically these guys, these um, um, measurements are analogs of meters, kilometers, miles, yards, feet, etc, etc in translational motion. Just like translational motion that we had this definition for velocity, which was change in displacement over some time. So we had velocity equals change in displacement over some time. We have exact same analog in rotational motion, which we call angular velocity and we, uh, and we denote it by omega, little omega. So this is angular velocity. And this is essentially change in number of degrees or revolutions or radians over some time. So uh, this is change in number of degrees. This is change in the dis in displacement. And we go we, uh, basically these are, you know, this is angular velocity, which gives us gives us a flavor of how fast we spin around our cir circle. So if I cover a lot of degrees during very short amount of time, that means my angular velocity is pretty high compared to uh, the case where I'm like n covering very, very small number of angles in a very, very long time. Right. So this is, this is uh, essentially um, how we define angular velocity. Now, when we, if we want to move on and, you know, continue uh, to um, think about analogs and whatnot, we get to acceleration, which was change in velocity over some time, which was meters, 
per second squared, kilometers per second squared, miles per uh, second squared, miles per hour squared, kilometers per hour squared, and whatnot. We have the same analog for rotational motion, and we call that rotational or angular acceleration. We denote it by alpha, and then this is essentially just like this, that's change in velocity over some time. This is change in angular velocity over the time which is radians per second squared, degrees per second squared, revolutions per second squared, revolution per minute squared, revolution per minute per second. We always should be having two factors of time when we are discussing about acceleration. So it's either it's uh, linear acceleration or it's angular acceleration. We always, always have to be having two factors of time. Second squared, minutes, second whatever, hours, minute, hours squared, and and uh, that's pretty much it. So if we, uh, let, let's keep going with, uh, with our analogies and everything, we could write uh, acceleration as V2 minus V1 over T. Samely, we can just open this up and write alpha as omega 2 minus omega 1 over the time, or omega f minus omega i, which is final minus initial. And that's pretty much it. So, um, if you remember, um, we, after acceleration in translational uh, motion or linear motion, we had force. And now we have the same analog for, uh, uh, for force here in rotational motion, and we call that torque. Okay, so torque is denoted by this um, Greek symbol tau, which is essentially the force times the lever arm. So this lever arm is essentially the distance between the force and the, the point about which the object is pot can potentially move, it can, can potentially rotate around. So torque is because it's rot rotational motion, torque is some sort of a force that is able to rotate, uh, that is able to rotate an object about some point, and that is called torque. So torque is some sort of a force that can possibly able to rotate something about a center of uh, about a an, about an axis of rotation. A uh, very, um, you know, usual analogy and very everyday um, life experience with torque is opening and closing doors. So we are having these hinges on the door. Those, the, this is basically axis of rotation. This is where the door is rotating around and has this potential to rotate around. And this is the knob. So we know that we have to exert some force either that way or push it in order to be able to rotate the door about this axis of rotation. This is called lever arm. We denote it by R, uh, which is the distance from the hinge, from the pivot point up to the point that we are exerting the force. This force needs to be perpendicular to the lever arm in order to be written as force times uh, lever arm. If the force is parallel, if we push or pull the door this way, we know it's not going to, It's uh, the, the door is not going to be, um, you know, rotating. So that's that. And also, you know, talking about torque um, and, you know, explaining more, uh, if you ever have, you know, um, knots in your tires that you, you need to unscrew and basically take your tire out, you know that you need to use a wrench, which what it does, it gives you a big lever arm so that you can apply this, the, 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 act, uh, the, the, uh, the sufficient amount of torque with your little force. So we, for, in order to unscrew this, we need to be exert, we need to be exerting some sort of torque because we are not very powerful in terms of our force of our hand. We need a wrench with a long rev lever arm to make up for it. So this, when it gets bigger, then it can, uh, you know, compensate for the small force of our hands and give rise to some sufficient amount of torque. Uh, in the next video, I'm going to be talking about these things in more detail. Bye.